Is it dangerous to search for intelligent aliens? One of the most fascinating questions in astronomy is whether there is intelligent life outside Earth or not. Our place in this universe and our existence itself is a major milestone which human beings have achieved as a civilization. We humans can proudly say that we have evidence that planet Earth houses an intelligent and technologically advanced civilization. We can receive signals from all around the universe, determine their sources and qualities, and have begun to explore beyond the boundaries of our own planetary home. But what if any intelligent civilization actually exists? Will they be a danger for us? Are we prepared for something like that? Should we try to communicate with them? These are some of the most intriguing and debatable questions in all of science today, and in this video we will talk about all of that. It's been more than 50 years since we have been actively searching for extraterrestrial life, and we still don't have definitive evidence to confirm the existence of extraterrestrial life out there. Simultaneously, many have recommended publicly announcing our position and presence in the hopes of attracting the notice of and making contact with a similarly sophisticated civilization somewhere in the galaxy. Others believe that this is a terribly, potentially self-destructive technique. It is an intriguing and fascinating issue to explore, right at the boundaries of science and the interface of an unknown risk-reward-hazard scenario. The fate of society as a whole, and possibly humanity as a whole, may be at stake. There is a big hope and a big fear of making first contact with aliens. What will the experience be like? What will they be like? How advanced will they be? Even though we don't know answers to the questions until we find them, here are five major possibilities. 1. The first and simplest of them all, in our own cosmic backyard, we discover basic microbial-like life. This is accomplished by discovering fossilized, dormant, or even active non-Earth life forms somewhere in or traveling through our solar system. This discovery would be made through exploration missions or by getting lucky and having a chunk of life containing material land here on Earth. The second possibility is we discover indirect hints of life on an exoplanet or exomoon orbiting a distant star. We'll find the signals of a life planet using either direct imaging or transit spectroscopy and conclude that the most plausible explanation is that it's populated. 3. An advanced extraterrestrial society sends us a techno-signature, which we decode. SETI would discover this whether it arrives in the radio band, another electromagnetic frequency, or by some signal we have yet to decode, maybe from powerful neutrinos. 4. We have direct contact with aliens. This is the hope of people looking into unexplained flying objects, aerial phenomena, that somewhere in the gaps between what's been identified and what's been observed, but not at a high enough resolution to reveal, a sentient extraterrestrial spacecraft is waiting to be discovered. 5. Or maybe there are aliens out there waiting to be contacted but haven't been actively broadcasting. They're waiting for their first message from an alien civilization, so it's up to us to transmit so they can receive it. Scientists have been pursuing the first three for a long time and will continue to do so. The fourth one is still mostly pseudoscience and conspiracy theories. However, a new initiative attempts to improve that. However, the fifth one arguably brings our deepest hopes and concerns to the fore. The hope among scientists, of course, is that at least one another intelligent and technologically advanced civilization has arisen at some point in time in our Milky Way. They might become technologically advanced and curious like us and start searching for life in their own neighborhood. Perhaps they discover the answers to questions we're still looking into such as What is the key to long-term nuclear fusion and, more broadly, the solution to our energy woes? How did this race overcome infighting, resource hoarding, and overconsumption, and the dangers of global war to survive on their home planet? And how plentiful is life in our cosmic backyard, on planets, moons, and even smaller bodies within their own solar system, as well as on worlds beyond their own home star? But it's possible that they sought techno-signatures meticulously and didn't find any for a long time, leading them to give up. Perhaps the only thing preventing them from reaching us is because they are unaware that we exist, and they are not actively broadcasting, failing to publicize their presence. If that's the case, maybe all we need to do is say, we're here. 
Once our signal reaches them, ranging from a few light years to tens of thousands of light years, they may send a signal or perhaps a crewed expedition back, answering our long-standing question affirmatively, yes, there are other intelligent aliens out there, and they have arrived. Of course, for every optimism we have, there is a corresponding worry. The concern is not that there is no one out there to receive a signal. The aliens will hear us and ignore us, deciding not to react or our efforts will be worthless, falling below the threshold to reach whatever alien civilization is out there before the signal we broadcast sinks below the cosmic noise background. Instead, the concern is that aliens will intercept the signal and travel here with nefarious intent. The concern is that by declaring our presence to the universe, a predatory, plunderous alien culture with technology far, far superior than ours will set out to conquer us. Given the technological gap that will undoubtedly exist, since they are likely hundreds, thousands, or even millions of years ahead of us, it will be a brief, horrific battle that ends in extermination or enslavement for mankind. The storyline of many alien invasion movies, yet without an implausible triumph for us plucky humans, we may be doomed. Of course, humans have been announcing our presence to any sufficiently advanced onlookers for more than 80 years. Ever since the first broadcast radio and television signals were transmitted, powerful enough at the proper frequencies to travel beyond Earth's atmosphere, ionosphere, and Van Allen belts. If we draw an 80-year light-year radius sphere around Earth, we'd find that there are over 10,000 star systems, the most of which are still unexplored today that may have received a surefire signal of humanity's presence here on Earth. There is, however, a distinction to be made between what we have done and continue to do unwittingly and making a powerful attempt to reach out to whatever may exist in the galaxy beyond our own backyard. The primary notion falls under the umbrella of many, messaging extraterrestrial intelligence, which is often known as active SETI since it is actively transmitting, including targeted broadcasting at star systems of special interest. That initiative has garnered a great deal of attention as well as criticism and worry. In terms of what we know, we've come a long way from what most of us could have envisioned even a few decades ago. We only had hypothetical evidence that planets outside our solar system existed at the start of the 1990s. We didn't know how frequently Earth-sized worlds were around sun-like stars. We didn't know what kinds of planets were common or rare in the universe, and we didn't know if our solar system was common, unusual, or a cosmic oddity. Many of the items have been altered as of 2021. Our own Milky Way has around 400 billion stars, yet we are only one of approximately 2 trillion galaxies in the visible universe. Among the stars in our galaxy, planets and planetary systems surround 80 to 100 percent of stars. 20% of the stars are sun-like with the K, G, or F subtypes. In terms of size and mass, 10-20% to 20 of those planets are similar to Earth. And 20-25% 20 to 25 of those systems had a planet in their habitable zone, which means they'd have the correct temperatures for liquid water on their surfaces if they had Earth-like atmospheres. Putting all of those parts together, we discover that there are likely a few billion potentially inhabited worlds in our own galaxy worlds with the appropriate circumstances and ingredients for life to emerge. There are a lot of possibilities out there, but what we don't know is significant and it leaves us very confused about the ultimate question. How many sentient, technologically sophisticated civilizations are there? It would be naive of us to think that we are the only intelligent species in our galaxy. After all, we still don't know the answers to three really important questions. One, how many of the worlds we identify as potentially livable really have or have had life emerge on them? Two, how many of the planets where life emerges have life sustained itself through cosmic periods, such as billions of years, where it evolves to become complex, multicellular, and highly differentiated? Three, and how many of the worlds where life survives, develops, and grows sophisticated truly have intelligent and technologically advanced life? According to what we can measure so far, our Milky Way contains billions of potentially habitable worlds. But we must be honest about our lack of knowledge. If the answer to all three of these questions is something like 1%, then intelligent life has originated millions of times in our galaxy. If the answer to all three of these questions is 0.01% or less, we may be the first in the entire galaxy to reach this point. 
The honest fact is that we cannot know till we have more and better information about the universe. But if any one of these three stages is hard in the sense that it is exceedingly unlikely, mankind may genuinely be alone. Of course, this is a completely theoretical thinking exercise, driven mostly by our own imaginations and our limited understanding of historical occurrences on Earth. Regardless of whether sentient aliens exist or whether their intentions are hostile or helpful, one reality remains undeniable. For all of the issues humans face on Earth, some self-inflicted, others caused by external influences, there is no sign that anybody else is coming to save us. Nobody is coming to remedy our energy difficulties, resource management, challenges, unsustainable environmental practices, or problems such as conflict, famine, nutritional shortages, or water insecurity. No one is going to help us appreciate each other's lives, or even our own. If we want to be saved from our current issues, we must turn internally to ourselves and outward, not to the stars, but to one another. The greatest resource we have in the entire globe is the accumulated knowledge we've gained in our capacity to collaborate. The components are present, but it is up to us to combine them and use them for the greater benefit. Seeking knowledge and authentic answers to our deepest concerns is undoubtedly an important element of the solution if we wish to change the direction of our species. But when it comes to the unknown, we can't rely on either hopes or worries. Instead, we must rely on the most valuable resource of all – awareness of our common humanity. So what do you think are the dangers of contacting intelligent aliens? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It encourages us to keep on making high quality content for you.